purpose of this video is to demonstrate some of the data protection features of the Digital Guardian Mac agent. We will start by downloading two files from the SharePoint directory. The first is a structured file in that we can look inside the file for keywords and phrases like social security numbers and credit card numbers. Examples of these are office files and PDFs. The second file is an unstructured file that can't be searched for keywords. Common examples of such files are CAD files, which will be used in our example today, or image files or seismic data often used in the oil and gas industry. Digital Guardian is able to provide protection to unstructured files via contextual classification. Our agent is able to see over 200 different contextual attributes associated with a file including source directory, destination, user, machine, application, etc. Using these techniques, we can classify files that have traditionally given data protection solutions issues. You can use contextual classification on structured files as well. For example, we can say, I don't care what is in XYZ directory, that directory is company confidential, and Digital Guardian can classify anything that comes from that directory no matter if it contains some keyword or not. Let's get started by downloading our files and working with them. So bring up our browser and go to our SharePoint directory that has our files. We'll be dealing with a couple of different file types here as we mentioned before, a structured and unstructured file. We'll start with the unstructured file, or the structured file, and that will be our Excel spreadsheet. So I'll go into this area called Personnel, which has our employee data in our Excel spreadsheet. We'll download a copy of it to our local machine so it's available for us to work with. Then we'll work with the unstructured file type, the CAD file we mentioned before. So I'll download this one here. as soon as it gets finished. There we go. We can go look at those two files on our local machine here. So here they are. We can double click on the CAD file, open up into a, this case, this case it's in the eDrawings viewer. We're able to work with the file as we would normally view it, take a look at it, whatever we need to do in this particular file. Once we've completed that, we can exit out and go about our way. Next what we'll do is we'll open up our Excel spreadsheet. In this case here we'll be able to work with the files we normally would. We can take and delete data out of the, the file. We can copy and paste within the file and we can save the file as we normally would. Now we're going to take and try to send this data outside of the company. So we're going to go to Gmail and attempt to do this. We'll start by doing with the company data here. And as soon as I double click on that file and try to upload it, I'm presented with a dialog here that gives me this information. It gives me my username, it says, Dear Pete White, you're attempting to upload a classified file, and it gives me the name of the file, to a public website. Now, there may be a legitimate reason why this user is doing this, and so they can justify this, this activity and by putting in the business justification and clicking continue. But they're, they're reminded of the employees, the, the company's internal IT policies via this click, this link here to review that data. So just remind them just with time that what's going on down there. Well, in this case here, it's obviously a violation of policy to be sending out social security numbers over the wire. So this user is reminded of this and simply clicks abort and X's out of it. Well, doing it with structured files is, is very common. But let's take a look at it from the unstructured file type. See, we have that same protection in place there. In this case here, I go to attempt to, to add it to the email attachment. And once again, I'm presented with a very similar dialog. In this case, it has this names, this this particular file name's uh, name in there instead of the other one. But the data is still the same. Once again, I can justify this, ex this for doing so and continue. Now, if I did put a justification in there, that information would be, would be put into the alert that the admin gets that hey, something, somebody's trying to send out confidential information out of your company. Once again, we're going to abort and violate and, and get out of that so no data ever left my company. Now the challenge is that as an IT organization, we've told customer employees for years that if you need to send something out over the internet, just simply put it into a zip file and put a password on it. So we're going to do that here. So we're going to take the file, we're going to put it into a zip. We're going to go here, we're going to put zip, we're going to put minus E, which means we're going to put a password on it, give it the name of the file we're going to do, and we're going to put this employee data 
xls into this zip file. Enter a password. I'm going to use a really secure password, a password. And now we've taken that file. I'm going to go one step further and act more like a piece, a piece of malicious malware that's trying to do something. Because most of the big breaches you've seen or heard about on the news are a result of not necessarily users doing something, sending out inadvertently or intentionally, but malware that has got into the company and egress data out that way. And the way they do that is they take the data and they put it into a form that most companies don't view or, or monitor on the way out, such as JPEGs. So I'm going to take and change this test .zip file that we had before. I'm going to call it vacation JPEG. So now I have this file called vacation JPEG. And so now I'm going to try to send that file out through email. So I'll put my email, my, my, my thing again. Go here and select JPEG. And once again, that, that, that activity is blocked. Because our kernel level driver, we see these activities happening, and we see the file when it was put into the zip, and that classification information went along with it into the zip. And thus, when it was renamed, that classification stuff was still, information was still there, and thus the protections associated with that, those classifications were there as well.